Greetings, Laddingtons. Today I thought to elaborate a bit upon the MGTOW question. Now, I will make a separate MGTOW video later on. This is just a response to some comments I saw on the um, female hypergamy video, and I've seen this before too. And it states that it's good that um, certain guys do not reproduce because that will have an eugenic effect. So it's good that these MGTOW are going their own way because if they're not strong enough to attract a female, it's good that they are not spreading on their genes. Now, this is a view I would like to contest. I would strongly like to counter signal this view because attracting a female in the modern world does not equal having strong genetics. And I will explain this with uh, an example. So imagine if you have a genius, a guy who is completely committed to his research in biology. That is what he does. He Every single day he wants to get into the grind, advance humanity's understanding of biology. So he goes into this lab every single day. That is what he does. That is his passion. Now obviously he perhaps haven't met so many girls in his life. Uh, perhaps he isn't the most chad. Perhaps he isn't the most confident. But um, you know he's a decent guy at least. And then we can look how big are his chances if he is a bit nerdy. If he is a bit shy. If he is a bit uh, socially incompetent. Now obviously he will have a terribly hard time attracting a fair maiden. Is it a good thing or a bad thing that his unique high intelligence genetics aren't being passed on to the next generation? Yeah, it is obviously a tragedy. Those sort of people are to a large part responsible for the greatness of European civilization. Uh, that we have had these people who have been able to commence a certain endeavor. All our scientists, for example, they have been able to do so because they've had a society backing them up. And they have been able to spread their genes because society has provided a wife for them. Today it's a completely different thing. And that is, in my view at least, I don't view it as a title of, oh, you have strong good genetics because you can find a mate. Sure, a lot of guys who are really solid, they have found a mate and I'm extremely happy for them. But it doesn't really work the same today as it did 500 years ago or 300 years ago. The people who couldn't spread their genetics back in the day, 300 years ago, that was something absolutely wrong with them. Society said, you know, we must kill you off because you're not good for uh, society. Today, it can be the case that certain guys simply do not have access to any females because there aren't any females, physically speaking, in their vicinity. We know in the West that uh, the more people who are moving into the cities, it's usually women. So therefore... These women end up, some of them, becoming bitter cat ladies and then you have guys out in the countryside without a fair maiden. Now obviously, yes, a lot of guys who can't attract a female, perhaps there's something wrong with them. But there's also a very large group of guys who have good genetics but they can't spread them because they can't attract a female because of various reasons. So yet again to take the example of the genius in biology. He will probably, in the modern age, he will not spread his top tier intelligence genetics on. Because he can't, he can't afford to spend the time and energy on how to learn to attract women. So he's in a bit of a bad situation there. Whereas a few centuries ago he would have a stable wife at his side from an early age. A wife who can greatly help him in his endeavors. That's something we need to be clear about as well. That a genius... He can be a genius because he has people backing him up. So if you look upon a lot of inventors and philosophers in Western civilization, yeah, a lot of them have had a beautiful wife by their side. Now imagine if they had not had that. Imagine if they had not had access to a society that provided them with certain um, things, such as a woman. Yeah, they would probably be in a, in a much worse situation. So anyway, my criticism of this statement that it's good that certain guys do not reproduce. Uh, no, in the modern world, good genetics, strong genetics isn't necessarily the same as being able to attract females. Uh, certain females, they're attracted to absolutely horrendous guys who have uh, low intelligence, etc. 
that is regrettable. And certain guys, and I'm especially talking about a bit more nerdy, technique-oriented, science-oriented guys who they go to high school among other men, uh, because usually science is dominated by men. Then they go into university with other men. Then they go into a profession, which is then perhaps researching certain things in uh, whatever scientific field they spend their time with other men. They don't have access to that many encounters with females, and they can't compete with Chad who is out getting all the women. And that, in my view, is not good at all. So I obviously have my criticism of MIGTAO. I'm not a MIGTAO myself. Um, I do think all good Laddingtons, all good Legionaries strive to get a fair maiden. Strive to get a good fair maiden that you can have children and a stable family with. But if you are in a position where you can't get a female for whatever reason, it might be your fault because something is wrong with you, but it also might be the fault of the modern world. Uh, and I'm not saying that it's the women's fault, it's the fault of how our society is looking today. So as I said before, 300 years ago society would have taken care of these sort of things. Today these guys, they're being left without and uh, that is regrettable. So, that's my thoughts. XXO, boom.